All right, let's let's get started. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Cyber Five results. Um, we really quickly kind of aggregated our data and wanted to get some data back to our community this week um, to help kind of give an update of what happened, help you benchmark your results. Um, I'm Melissa Burdick, and uh, I'm here with Mindy Bashaw. Right? Yeah. Um, Yep. Formerly Mindy Martin. Yep. Um, all right. So take it away. Let's go to the next slide, Mindy. And we're going to talk today about key trends, our results, our insights, and some takeaways. Um, I did just introduce ourselves on the next slide. But for those of you who don't know us, uh, I'm Melissa Burdick. I'm the co-founder and president of PacView. And then Mindy is our COO. Um, both of us worked together at Amazon for many, many years. So um, we should have worn flannel today, Mindy, because that's the Q4 thing to do um, at Amazon to, to wear flannel started by Jeff Wilkie, but we're both wearing green. So we're, we're kind of in the holiday spirit nonetheless. And then just a little bit about PackView. If you don't know us, hopefully you do, but we're an enterprise platform um, for brand sellers and agencies. Uh, we operate across Amazon, Walmart, Instacart, uh, Critio, and, and many others coming soon. Um, so with that, we will take it away. Uh, Mindy will kick us off with key trends. Oh, but before we do that, let's talk about um, our purchase behavior for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Did you buy anything interesting? You know, I did. Um, I, I would say from a deal perspective, the best deal I got was a, a TV, which is kind of boring. But, you know, I wanted to tell you about a couple of purchases I made because they were a little bit, one was out of character for me. And, and then the other one was just a little bit indicative of this strange um, extended holiday season. So um, the first one was, you know, Melissa, you know me very well. We've worked together for many years and you know I'm not a morning person. Um, but there's a big sale, a candle sale at Bath and Body Works that happens, I believe it's once a year. I've actually never gotten to take part in it, um, and usually because it's in store and you've got to wait in lines, etc. So this year they did move it online, um, and it started at um, 6 a.m. Eastern, and for those of you that don't know, we're here on the West Coast, so it was 3 a.m. Pacific time for us. Um, I did set my alarm so that I could get up and take advantage of that sale. Um, so $25 candles for $10. Um, Anyways, they did have a lot of uh, stress on their site. There was a lot of delays in checkout, but I, I was able to purchase um, 10 candles for 100 bucks. So I'm excited about that one. How much uh, better was it to have to get to buy it online than to actually go to a store? I, I wouldn't have gone. <laughs> Even if there was no COVID, I would never have <laughs> woken up and stood in that line for some candles. Um, and then the other one is, you know, if, if you know me and you've, you've talked to me, you know, you know that I tend to say, you know, whenever I'm looking at data and trying to get insights in this industry, you know, I do look at myself. I, I am a more savvy shopper, just being that I've worked in this industry my entire career. But um, at the end of the day, I'm still a consumer and I still have typical consumer behaviors. I'm a deal seeker, et cetera. And so, you know, one interesting story for me that kind of ties into some of the trends that we're seeing in the data that we'll share with you guys is... Um, you know, I just moved into a new house on Halloween and I was looking for a couple of leather chairs and I found some at West Elm. And so I was watching them waiting for them to go on sale. So they had gone on sale earlier in November for 30% off. But one of our coworkers who's also, you know, into home furnishings, you know, told me that he's gotten some deals there for 40% off and once a year or so they'll go to 40% off. So I did not buy at 30% off. I waited, hoping that Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I'd find the 40% discount. Um, and so then, you know, the, the deal went away and then it came back at some point, but it, it was like not even 10% off. So then I got super nervous. So the minute it came back at 30% off, um, right around Thanksgiving, I just pulled the trigger because I was too nervous at that point to wait for another 10%. Um, so anyway, it's not, not exciting, but I think, again, it's just a bit indicative about the consumer behavior and, you know, some of the, excuse me, some of the trends that we're seeing in the data. Um, what about you, Melissa? I know that, um, you know, we like to talk about our shopping and I tend to be more frugal and probably more of a deal seeker than you. Um, what did you buy this year um, for yourself, actually? So not even a giftable item, but what was your favorite Cyber 5 purchase? Um, I'm, I'm a deal seeker, but... Um... 
Yeah. So I, the interesting thing, and this ties into Amazon advertising. I don't know if anyone has watched the show, Alex Ryder. It's an IMDb TV um, show, but it's actually a great show about a, a teenage spy that you can watch with your kids, but it's actually like pretty cool. Uh, they just uh, renewed for a second season, but it's very similar to kind of like a Peacock or Xfinity where you watch a TV show for free and then there's commercials and the commercial it's on the Amazon network, of course. And the commercials were very product focused, like Lay's potato chips. And the one that you know kept playing was this food, uh, the food ninja, no, the food, the ninja foodie, which is kind of like this crock pot, you know, slow cooker nine in one thing, air fryer. And so that I did that caught my eye and I did buy it, although did not buy it on Amazon. I bought it on Costco because it was cheaper. Um, so, uh, Amazon won't get that attribution, uh, in their data, but, uh, I, that's certainly how I discovered it. So good for, uh, the company Ninja. Great. Well, with that, let's jump into some of the results that we're seeing this season. Um, so, you know, these are a, a look at some initial results that came out from Adobe. So on Thanksgiving day, when many physical retailers, including Walmart and Target were closed, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in store, U.S. traffic fell 94.9% year over year, according to Sensor, Sensormatic Solutions. Adobe had predicted that Thanksgiving would be $6 billion. And while it was still the highest it's ever been at 5.1 billion, it fell short of their estimate. Shopify reported that Thanksgiving Day's peak sales per minute from global shoppers were about $919,000, an increase of roughly 34% compared with last year. Um, American consumers did spend $9 billion online on Black Friday, which was up 21.6% year over year, again, according to data from Adobe, uh, which had originally predicted sales of $10.3 billion, so $1.3 billion short relative to their projections. Um, this figure still makes Black Friday, for now at least, the second largest online spending day in U.S. history, and that's after Cyber Monday of 2019. Retailers that offered curbside pickup had a 31% higher conversion rate on traffic to their websites, which is really a reflection of how popular it's become for people to buy online or retrieve purchases without having to step into stores. Adobe Analytics reports the number of orders fulfilled using curbside pickup has already grown over 100% year over year for 2020 through the holiday week. And then this is just a quick look at Amazon's advertising forecast from eMarketer. I think one of the interesting things here is eMarketer has um, released three revised forecasts in 2020, just based on all of the, the changes and you know, constant trend changes that we're seeing with COVID. Um, the latest forecast has been revised upward um, you know, from March, which was their original forecast, which they then brought down in June. Um, so it's just interesting some of the seesaw that we're seeing, but um, you know, they revised their forecast for 2020 and beyond for Amazon's ad revenue. And really after the initial onset of COVID in the US combined with Amazon's initial shift to focusing on prioritizing essential goods, eMarketer brought down their forecast in June because many brands had paused or reduced their ad spend while trying to assess and react to the COVID impact on their business. Once Amazon got back to shipping across all categories, brands actually came back to spending at heightened levels. And we've seen that heightened level of spend continue to increase for a number of brands and advertisers that we work with um, as they continue to look for opportunities to shift budgets where consumers are shopping. And we do expect that this trend will continue well into 2021. Another interesting data point out of eMarketer is just this continued shift in behavior in terms of where consumers start their product research. So it's not necessarily about where they're purchasing it's where are they looking um, for information about products that they might be interested in purchasing. Um, and I think what's interesting here is, you know, the data is starting to show that it's expanding well beyond Amazon, um, calling out, you know, just other marketplaces, um, re other retailer websites, and also uh, brand direct D2C sites, um, which is super interesting. I know, you know, D2C has been a big push for brands over the last several years. And so it's just interesting to see this trend you know, shifting and starting to see some efficacy of brands' efforts in building out their D2C sites. Um, and then lastly, for me, this really highlights the importance of, of cross-retailer marketing, right? This isn't even about, you know, where they're ultimately purchasing. It's about where are they starting to look for information on your product to inform their ultimate purchasing decision. 
And again, for those of you that don't know much about PackView, you know, we really are, you know, a cross e-commerce retailer um, marketing software provider. So, you know, this is really aligned with what we're seeing as well in terms of just the need to be present across multiple retailer websites. Um, and then this is just to show that, you know, Cyber 5 this year clearly became Cyber, Cyber Month um, with Prime Day kicking off the season early this year and the expected stress on the delivery industry, retailers followed suit and launched deals earlier this year with the no month of November really becoming more of a deal month. Um, you know, every year it's, it's really interesting to see how it, it goes from, um, you know, Halloween to Christmas. And I mean, this year for me just felt even more so like, I, I don't even, I, I don't think I heard anything about Thanksgiving in between. So um, just more and more, you know, people shifting to focusing on purchasing for holidays with, with the expected shipping delays. And then next up, Melissa, I'd like to turn it over to you to share some more uh, Cyber 5 results and insights. Perfect, thanks. All right, so kind of high level summary here. Um, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday 2020 was a little bit less impressive than previous years. In particular, Cyber Monday advertising was a little bit less efficient this year, and brands experienced a smaller rate of return on their ad spend. Uh, and then, you know, one thing that we really like to look at, and I'm sure everybody out there is looking at, is kind of Prime Day versus Black Friday, Cyber Monday, if you're analyzing your Amazon business. And so we really, we, what we saw in the data and what we believe is that, you know, having Prime Day in October seems to have negatively impacted the CyberFi performance. Um, there seems to be some deal fatigue, people pull forward some budget. Um, you know, we kind of, people are seeing some out of stocks in, on their key ASINs by the time they got to uh, this CyberFi week. Uh, which, you know, makes sense and, and may have done, you know, that's kind of was done on purpose, but we did see that um, in terms of the deal fatigue, many brands ran promotions at the beginning of November and across retailers. So they had less of a need to run steeper discounts on Cyber 5, um, or maybe they didn't participate at all. And then we did see stronger performance Black Friday over Cyber Monday. And while this isn't like a high level summary, we wanted to bring this to everybody's attention because we believe that um, this kind of bug that we saw during Prime Day in the sponsored brand creative impacted spend allocation because there was kind of poor performance in the sponsored brand ad unit because of this. And uh, not sure if everyone knew about this, but we're kind of seeing that in the data. So we'll show you a screenshot of that in a second. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because it feels like it's a new year, but the same deal. Uh, you know, you can predict that 23andMe and Instant Pot and those headphones are going to be on deal, which was the case this year. So it's just kind of funny to, to keep seeing, I mean, how much more penetration can there be with these kind of products? But I will say that I bought an Instant Pot two years ago and it is still sitting in my house. I has never been used. So, <laughs> um, maybe I'll have more use out of my food ninja. Melissa, uh, I did buy one this year too, and I it's still sitting in my cupboard too, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, not the only one. Um, so this is the this is the bug that we were talking about. So basically in the in the creative, uh, if you click, you know, if you type in, you know, batteries or something like that, uh, the little kind of um, badge for a deal was not showing up during Prime Day. So it's a little bit of a bug. And then um for, for uh, Cyber 5 and uh, that it was fixed. But we think kind of the damage was done because people analyzed their performance and saw a sponsored brand wasn't performing as well. And so when we looked at the data, average daily spend for sponsored brand ads was down 12% uh, Prime Day versus Cyber 5, while sponsored product ad spending was up 9%. So we think that uh, probably people looked at their performance, it wasn't performing as well, but it potentially was because of this bug. And then just a trend around this live streaming. Um, we saw this during Prime Day. This is kind of becoming a bigger thing is, you know, this was this is actual widget on the detail page where there's this live stream component. And if you think about it as people aren't going to stores, really having this video and live stream, you know, shopping, um, component really helps people understand the products. And the key takeaway that I have around this is, you know, how are brands thinking about leveraging influencers in 2021 and making sure that they have their video content and some of this content that's needed. You know, some people it's hard enough to have just like the detail page content that you need, let alone start thinking about what is your influencer strategy and how you're going to get that on the site. So that's just the kind of takeaway there. 
And then in terms of search behavior, finally, uh, toilet paper and face mask was pushed down out of the top, the top 10. And uh, top searches are finally kind of holiday oriented and people are decorating and things like that. So these are kind of the top clicked on items uh, last week during the holidays. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if toilet paper and face masks make their way back up after everyone's shopped. <laughs> so we'll see. All right. Now we're going to go into a little bit deeper dive on the numbers and Mindy, uh, take it away on that. Yeah, so um, as Melissa mentioned earlier, we did see some interesting behavior when comparing Prime Day um, to Cyber 5. So, you know, while these two events are, are never truly apples to apples comparisons, given a number of factors, including the mix and deal activity, the time of year that they take place, and also the consumer intent for the event, right? Are they shopping for personal reasons? Are they gifting? Um, but this year, it's especially interesting to look at this comparison, given the closer time frame of both of the events, as well as Prime Day shopping intent is likely being more weighted toward gifting than it has been in, in past Prime Days. So um, this chart is looking at average daily performance for the two days of Prime Day compared to the average daily performance of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And you know, ultimately, what the some of the conclusions that we're drawing is that if Amazon's intent was to pull forward the shopping season, you know, this is a clear indicator that they did see success in doing so. Um, while this makes sense, given that Prime Day is an Amazon exclusive event, so it would make sense that it has you know stronger performance. Um, and you know, for Cyber Five, you know, consumers have more places to shop when looking for holiday gifts, like I mentioned earlier, D 2 C sites you know, mass retailers, specialty retailers, et cetera. Um, I think what's most surprising to me is just how much bigger Prime Day was um, than Cyber 5. So, you know, just quickly looking at this slide, looking at the um, average daily KPIs for Black Friday and Cyber Monday relative to Prime Day. As Melissa mentioned, it was a little bit lackluster. Um, impressions were down 40%, um, sales were down 30%. ROAS down 9% and CPCs were essentially flat. Again, this is based on, you know, weighted um, pack view consumer data. But I think the next slide, or sorry, uh, client data. Um, the next slide I think is actually super interesting to tell the story. And this is one of our favorite slides. So um, one of our team members, Riku, puts the slide together for us. Um, he started doing it when COVID hit and it was just really cool to see some of the trends. So, you know, this is um, a trended graph of consumer behavior. This is daily ad impression. So this is just indicative, right? This is not sales. Um, but what's super interesting is instead of seeing that steady lead up to Cyber 5 that, that we saw in 2019, uh, we saw a two and a half times impression spike for Prime Day 2020 over both Prime Day 2019 and Black Friday, Cyber Monday of 2020. Um, and then the other interesting point is just looking at that, um, the daily volatility leading up to Cyber 5 in 2020 versus 2019. So, you know, 2019 follows a very typical Amazon sales trend. And, you know, you see a, a lot of small peaks and valleys, and this is because this is a daily chart. So it's really showing you some of that, that day of week pattern, um, sales pattern. But what's really interesting is, is that lead up. Um, this year and just between the prime day spike and, and the lead up, just all those, those peaks and valleys. So on that, Mindy, do you think yeah. that, do you think that this is going to have to be like a throwout year, you know, like when people look at next year and, and hopefully things are back to normal, let's cross our fingers on it. But as we look at, you know, preparing budgets and, and thinking out about spends, I just wonder if we have to kind of disregard so much of this behavior this year. Uh, actually, I, I think it's a bit of the opposite. Instead of disregarding it, it it's really, you know, you're, we're going to have to make some assumptions, right? People are going to have to make some judgment calls on on what they think next year will look like. Obviously, you know, with, with the vaccine coming out soon, you know, there's going to be some changes in consumer behavior next year. But without knowing what those could look like, I think this goes back to, you know, something I said on a previous webinar, which is, you know, you take all the information you have and you build the best plan that you can, but that's why it's, it's really critical to have a plan B and a plan C, and then also, you know, making sure that you're empowering your executors to make real time decisions because, you know, things are never going to shake out the way that, that any plan, um, you know, really expects them to. So um, I, I wouldn't say throw it out. I would say draw insights, take learnings, and then, 
you know, place some bets and factor some of this information into those bets that you plan to place next year. All right, so let's dive into some of the marketing KPIs. So again, as a reminder, this data is aggre an aggregated look based on PacView's total client performance. Um, so both sponsored brand and sponsored product ad spending followed similar curves the previous year, with spend rising the day before Thanksgiving and then remaining elevated over the Cyber Five weekend. Average daily spend on sponsored products advertising was up 37% year over year on Black Friday and 35% year over year on Cyber Monday. The year over year growth rates, however, pale in comparison to their respective 2019 growth, rate, growth rates, which saw 98% and 116% year over year growth, respectively, for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Uh, this is likely due to the fact that brands shifted some of their holiday budget into October as well as early November to capture some of the heightened traffic. Given all the speculation around Prime Day and the Prime Day impact on the season, uh, brands have been nervous to put as many eggs into the Cyber 5 basket this year. So, you know, many of the brands that we work with continue to face in inventory constraints, as Melissa mentioned earlier, and they're really looking to sell as much as possible as early in the season to ensure that they hit their annual targets and they're able to get shipments out the door. And also, you know, we've seen some clients with fiscal years that are not aligned to the calendar year pull some of their Q1 2021 budget into Q4 of 2020 to maximize um, sales potential for the fiscal year with the heightened traffic. And then looking at um, ACoS and cost per click. So interestingly, cost per click over the Cyber 5 didn't follow the same trend as last year. Sponsored brand CPCs only rose 21% week over week and grew 2% year over year on Black Friday. So essentially flat year over year. Um, Cyber Monday CPCs were only up 13% year over year. And then the Saturday and Sunday between Black Friday and Cyber Monday actually saw CPCs decline 7% and 21% in 2020 year over year. While less pronounced than sponsored brands, sponsored products also saw similar CPC growth this year, up 16% year over year on Black Friday and 20% on Cyber Monday and both days had experienced year-over-year -year growth of 30% in 2019. All right, um, and then advertisers typically see a lower ACoS on Black Friday and Cyber Monday compared to the prior week since conversion rates um, increase, but 2020 didn't follow this trend this year. So sponsored product ACoS decreased only 7% week over week on Black Friday and increased on Cyber Monday by 15% week over week. Similarly, sponsored brand ACoS decreased 17% on Black Friday, but increased over the weekend and remained elevated up 1% week over week on Cyber Monday, as Cyber Monday saw lower conversion. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa for some category insights. Great. And I, I do want to respond to one of the audience questions. They asked a really good question, which is, is this Amazon data or is this your client data? And um, while we wish we had the entire Amazon data set to play with, um, only Amazon has that data. So this is, uh, this is based on PacView proprietary data. Um, and so uh, we do have a significant amount of ad spend flowing through our tool. So these, tr these are uh, pretty good trends to kind of follow and look at. All right, so we're gonna look at some category level detail, um, starting with the toy and game category. So this is a really interesting category uh, for advertising because it's usually dark for the most part of the year and then Q4 is like the Super Bowl. And so they, they heavily spend, you can see their ad spend levels are pretty high. Uh, and then you can kind of see like Rojas takes a dive and CPCs go up. So this is very, you know, you would, this is what you would expect in this category uh, within toys. And on the next slide, the other interesting thing I think about this category is I really feel like, does this not say at all for the year of COVID? So there wasn't a whole lot of change between 2020 and 2019 search behavior in terms of what are the top search terms? Lego, I mean, there's a little bit mixed, you know, who's number one, who's not. So LOL kind of made its way down and Lego made its way up. Um, maybe less popular, but the one thing is the jigsaw puzzle trend that we saw uh, come out as a craze in March where everybody was kind of stuck at home and doing jigsaw puzzles. And then on top of that, this is the top clicked item, which is this cozy retreat. I think maybe everyone ha is having a little bit of wishful thinking that they're at a cozy retreat versus in lockdown, which is the case of where we are in Seattle because we're in a further lockdown here. Um, but 
thought it was kind of funny that this is actually on the kids holiday list. It does say adult puzzle in the title. Um, but anyway, that, that was kind of an interesting insight that we saw there. And then on the next slide, so we just have a few slides talking about category trends. You can see here that toys had the highest spend when you look at the average daily spend. The way that we like to use this data is more like benchmark. So if you're sitting there kind of th thinking about how, how is my category doing against or how's my you know, brand doing against others in the category? That's really how we leverage this data and look at being able to, to run your advertising program more effectively with certain targets and benchmarks. So that, that's kind of the gist of this data, um, but we just wanted to point out a few interesting things that we saw. And on the next slide, um, ROAS. So something to point out here, the pet uh, category had you know, high spend and high CPCs, but unlike electronics, poor ROAS. So this seems to show that, you know, non-giftable items don't perform as well during these periods. And uh, this could also be exaggerated by a lot of people stocking up on CPG and pet items this year. Um, and the absence of major price drops, people don't need to move product and there's kind of less conversion, less of a conversion trigger when there isn't a deal kind of going on. Um, Unlike, you know, an electronics category where something is very giftable, highly promotional, lots of deals across the site, people need a, a reason to buy. And then looking at uh, the CPC category trends. So again, like electronics is kind of an interesting one since Raw is still spiked on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and even with much higher spend in CPCs uh, for, you know, these big ticket items, which are usually giftable and they have higher ASPs the highest ASPs can mitigate the high competition and CPCs. So we just wanted to give you kind of a quick hitting uh, insight into some category benchmarks. We are sending out our report. Uh, so everyone on this webinar will receive the report that we send out. So you can actually see the data <laughs> versus like squint at a screen. Um, and just a little bit about what is up next. We have, uh, like I said, uh, We'll be sending our Cyber 5 CPC report out. You can you know, feel free to download this, send this around to your teams. And then the other big thing that we have coming up this month is on December 16th, we're doing a first mover event around the pet category and our very own Matt McRory, uh, one of our account directors is going to be speaking with one of our clients um, on the pet category. So if you are in that category, it's a, it's a must attend event. Um, highly recommend that you do. Uh, and with that, we are at our, you know, 30 minute allotted time. We thank everybody for your time today. Um, and we hope you have a great weekend and happy shopping. <laughs>